is that in focus? Do I have to move my face? I have face tracking on. It's not always the best thing. Yeah, this is week four, right? What week is this? Okay, so one thing that they did note in here for fiber prep, hello, my face. This book is so good. Sometimes I just want to like dive in and forget to talk to you guys. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. You're probably part of my tribe. This is the channel where I document my fiber journey. I'm excited to have you guys here with me while I go through it. So this is episode four of the 2021 breed study. I got this breed study from Wool Gatherings. There will be a link in the description box if you think, oh my gosh, I need to do this and spin along. You can spin along, you can spin along in two years and use the playlist, which will also be linked. So many options. Your life is just so open. I envy you. This week, I'll be spinning Falkland and finish. Well, we're going to talk about each one, spin them, and then go ahead and talk about the experience and the finished yarn, and then go on to the next. I'm using the Fleece and Fiber Source book. I really should be linking that too. I'm using the Fleece and Fiber Source book as my source for this spin, although as kind of like a backup source, I am using the be the Spinner's Guide to Fleece, not the Beginner's. Trish. If I can't find anything in the Fleece and Fiber source book. You might see me use that too. I don't know yet because I haven't done any pre-research this week. When I look up Falkland in the Fleece and Fiber source book, I don't know why that's so hard for me to say. <laughs> but when I look it up, it actually says, oh, read glasses. The term Falkland refers to wool grown on the Falkland Islands off the coast of Argentina, but there isn't a Falkland breed of sheep. I had no idea that this was not a breed thing. Basically, it says the Falkland Islands are home to pretty good numbers of Polworths, Merinos, Corydales, some Romney, and looks like that's everything they mentioned. And it also just talks about how the shepherds in the Falklands have been breeding for ever finer fleeces over the years and then they just continue to do that. Oh, interesting. It says there's no known diseases on the islands for sheep. So I guess that's a great place for them to live, but they don't have to go through any of the chemical dipping processes that sheep have to do to keep disease away when they live in climates or whatever where there are diseases. The climate, which minimizes bacteria and other factors, can change the color of the wool. Interesting. Fineness ranges from 18 to 33 microns. Staple lengths are most often three to four inches. That's probably pretty close to what I've experienced. Maybe a hair over four, but not much. And it says good bulkiness and soft handle. So I have noticed that it feels pretty soft. It, it feels pretty soft, but it also has kind of that crisp feeling to it. So I like that. That's all it says in the Fleece and Fiber Source book. Again, it's saying this is not really a breed. It's more of a location of where it comes from. Let's check our staple. Oh my gosh, there's something else stuck in here. Hang on. From some other wool in the box. Um, Falkland, if you guys watched the video oh gosh, maybe two months ago or so, must be more than two months now, about tips on how to spin a more consistent yarn. I used Falkland in that video. Okay. So I was smart and I finally put a ruler on my desk this time. This is six and a half inches. So it's outside kind of like what they consider to be the standard and that would make me guess, although you really can't know for sure, that probably this is closer to a Polworth than a Merino. But I do have a six inch Merino in my hot little hands, raw. Um, I'm gonna spin this with a worsted draft. I'm pretty sure it's top from looking at it. And I, to be honest with you, it does feel and look a lot like Polworth that I've had in the past quite a bit. It has that 
almost like pearly color to it. Um, I don't really know how to describe it because it isn't really shiny. It's more pearly almost to me. All right, so we're gonna go spin this. Um, I'm gonna spin it with a short forward draw and we'll see what we have at the end. And I am gonna try and hit some consistency, but you know, it's really not my high priority. Okay, let's go spin it. All right, so let's recap. First of all, I don't think this is gonna be a spoiler. I enjoyed both of these a lot. And I have some interesting observations for you. So here are my sheets. Um, I did the Falkland first. I have spun this before. It's awesome. It's almost a little silky, which leads me to believe that um, when we talked about the breeds that maybe it has more pull worth in it or it is pull worth. It is really, really nice. Both of these I spun worsted, but the interesting observation is going to come when I compare them. I'll do that at the very end of the fin. The notes I wrote are spun up much like Polworth and has that same sheen. Loved it. I could spin that for days. Dense yarn, very even spin with very little spring, pretty soft all accurate it's quite soft still it's not as soft as like the really fine wools but it is quite soft and um it doesn't have tons of spring i'll show you guys so you've seen some of the other ones if i pull this does not really go far partly because it's top partly because the staple was so long partly because of the way i spun it all that stuff is gonna change it. As you guys know, I've been over it a million times, but still, it helps to hear. It is very even. There we go. It was so easy to spin consistently. Look at that spin. And it really does have just a little bit of pearliness to it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it in the video or not, but it's just a slight bit pearly. I absolutely love spinning this. I would could buy myself a whole bump. I'm not going to because I'm being good, but I could. It did inspire me also to go straight to the Falkland bump that I had in my closet. I pulled off a dozen four ounce batches. I need to dye some Falkland. This really got me going. That's one of the nice things about doing these. You know what I mean? It just really inspires me to grab those fibers that maybe I don't grab every day. They were shoved in the back, but something's got to be in the back. You know what I mean? So, so I loved it and you're probably gonna see more of it pretty soon <laughs> because I loved it. Did I say I loved it? I freaking loved it. On to the finish. I'm actually excited about this one. Let's look up finish. If you have heard of a fin, this would also be a fin. I, so I was lying all this time. I have actually spun fin a bunch of times, a ton and it all makes more sense to me now and i have to admit to you guys because i don't think i know everything i don't think i'm an expert i did not realize that this was also known as fin but it is it's very similar to some brown fin that i have spun before they are known to be one of the most prolific sheep in the world so 
way back episodes ago we actually talked about that so they are known for having multiple births that's one of the reasons why shepherds have really liked them throughout the years according to this they can have up to nine nine lambs that's a litter that's not just like a birth that's a litter okay so and it also says three to four is more common it says they're light averaging five pounds like to me that's kind of on the smaller side I mean you can get smaller of course but often described as silky it's like sleek and fluffy I actually really like a good fin I I had a bad fin once but that wasn't the sheep's fault it was definitely the person that sold it to me okay so it says most is white with a very slight warm cast to it but it says a lot of northern European short tail breeds get have an array of colors and Finn also can have blacks, grays, browns, fawn, and some spotted. But they're not common. Almost all Finns, oh this is something I didn't, I've never heard. Almost all Finns are single coated, although their heritage means a double coated fleece may show up now and then. So generally the fleeces are four to eight pounds three to six inch staple so I don't know what to expect here but we're gonna check in a minute the fiber diameter is 24 to 31 microns it says Canadian fins may run a little finer New Zealand fins a little coarser natural colors white black and gray less common shades of brown least common oh there's a picture of the shape I forgot I need to show you all right so here's the sheep picture like a whole little sheep family. One thing they noted in here for fiber prep is that because they're longer, they're better typically, I mean, it's always kind of a generality, but for um, combing. So this is comb top and I'm gonna go ahead and spin it worsted again. So this is the week where last week it was two woolens draws because, well, and also I changed the prep to woolen because they were kind of more suited to that. These two, in my opinion, and it's only an opinion, are more suited to a worsted draw. So I'm gonna spin them both more or less with a short forward draw, be a little modified for one and not the other, but you know. Let's check the staple on this fin. It does feel really nice and maybe a little bit silky. Okay. So I definitely have both ends. Let me check measure here. This is five and a half inches. And I'm also measuring what's in between my fingers because I'm definitely on one staple. Well, I'm excited, let's go get this spun. This is the first fiber that hasn't been white, I think, in the, in the breed study. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. Let's go do it. I don't have to change the prep. So this is gonna be a quick one. And the fin. Hi, how are you? I did modify the draw a little bit, but it was after I had stopped filming. So I 
started to allow the twist into the fiber supply a little bit because I was really having this struggle with consistency and I'm not sure why I had that with this but that's why we change it up that's why we try different things that's why we figure out that what works best for us it's cool there's lots of ways to do it if a different way works best for you I love it okay I made a couple notes has Kemp. This one had Kemp in it. You guys had questions about Kemp last time we talked about it. So Kemp and guard hairs, like uh, people confu confuse them and it really doesn't matter that much. It's either you're okay with it being in here or you're not, whatever. But Kemp, the way you can tell if it's Kemp and not a guard hair is if you grab, well, first of all, it's kind of flat. You know, those crinkles that you used to get in packages where they were like, corrugated paper that was like crimped kind of and then it was cut into pieces little strips it's strips kind of flat like that and they have a little bit of corrugation to them but if you grab one like this in two hands it'll literally just snap like a dry piece of grass or you know a dry leaf or whatever it's it just it's very brittle and it breaks like a little piece of vm but it isn't it's weird so it had a lot of Kemp and it had black and white Kemp in it which was interesting and it's super squishy really really squishy the color is not really my favorite but you know color is like the easiest thing to change ever if you're me super squishy I did end up with a pretty even spin once I modified that draft it says, struggled to spin evenly until I modified the draft. Um, very squishy, even spun worsted. Would make wonderful cables. This is one of the things that I wanted to make sure I had in my notes is like what things I think it's really well suited for. The reason I think that, I figured some of you guys would say like, okay Trish, what makes you think that? Okay, so the spring in it is helpful because when you're knitting cables, if you have something that has no spring back, you kind of stretch it when you twist the front and the back to make a cable. And so if you get that spring back, it'll pull itself back in together. Otherwise you get these weird loose stitches when you stretch it to cross it. So having that bounce back is really, really nice. It's just really squishy and I think that makes for a nice cable also, but check this out. On every single mini hank, I use the same Nitty Naughty. It's made of PVC. It's very jank. I'm fine with that um, because I, you can take it apart. It wasn't very expensive. I like all those things. I don't mind them. But check this out. So they were made on the same Nitty Naughty, okay? Look at this. See that? Because this as it came when it came off the nitty knotty shrunk up so much from the squish in the spring and this has none check that out and i'm not pulling i'm just like making it go straight it's way longer one was 68 and one was 72 so very very close in yardage and um it's kind of weird i did not weigh them they're all really close to an ounce so i just i'm not worried about that but check it it's just crazy that's nutty but that does tell me there's a lot of spring, a lot of squish. It's pretty great. The fin is amazing. This is always and forever going to be one of my favorites. I've processed I don't know how many fleeces. I never get tired of fin. I never get tired of Falkland either. How, what do I get tired of? We were joking about it. I was talking to a friend the other night and we were kind of laughing about it because I have said this before, my favorite thing is usually whatever I'm spinning in front of me. I mean, I didn't love the Devon, but I can just fall in love with it for what it is and the good things about it and what it's good to use for. It's a personality type thing and I've literally never put that together before. It's the same with people. I love it. I will definitely spin it again and I want to show you guys how far we are already. Check out how much we've already done. We did all these already. That is kind of crazy because it doesn't really seem like a ton when you're doing it, but it adds up to something. Doing a little bit each week adds up to something really big. So, and we're like, I don't know, a third of the way through. Yeah, this is week four, right? What week is this? Four. So that means we're eight in 
and there's 30. So no, we're not even a third of the way through yet. We have all this already. I feel rich when I have all this yarn. Is that weird? Next week, if you're still into this, some people are dropping off. I'm just gonna keep going because I really am documenting my journey and if people don't wanna go along with me, I respect that, it's okay, you're cool, we're cool, I'm cool. Uh, one of you asked last week, do I have any Gotland? Bam, next week, Gotland. And Herdwick, cannot wait. I actually kind of can't wait. I've never spun Herdwick before. I have had so many opportunities during this to spin things I haven't spun before. I, I think it's really good. I think it's really good for me to try new things. I am definitely back in love with Finn. And you know, I've never really been in love with Gotland. It's okay and it's good for certain things, but I'm feeling like I might like it better in top. We'll see. Anyway, if you have time to make anything, I hope it turns out super cool. I hope you get some time to be creative because it's good for your soul. Look at this guy. <laughs> it's good for your soul and I want everything good for your soul. So thanks for watching. I love you. Bye.